Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Bird Guy. I'm Matthew Daughter, the Executive Director of Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society. And this is the second video in a series having to do with eBird, the eBird website, how to use the mobile app, etc. The first video we talked mostly about the home page and how to log in, how to create an account. This episode we'll be talking mostly about the Explore section. And uh, after this video, we'll have at least one more, probably two, one having to do with uh, the My eBird section and one having to do with the Submit, Edit, and Manage of your checklists. So sit back and enjoy this uh, real-time tutorial on eBird and how to get the most out of it. So let's get started. Here we are back on the home page, and we're going to dive right into Explore because I think uh, Carolyn covered the submit portion of the website pretty well when she discussed the mobile app. We can talk more about that later, but I think I want to talk about some new material, which is located under Explore. So let's hit that for a second, see where it goes. Okay, so here we have a slightly different format and some new options. So you can explore a species and you can explore a region, species maps, images, hotspots, bar charts. Let's just take a look at what happens when we type in. Let's just see Northern Perula. I just saw one of those today. Um, kind of a rare bird in our area and you'll be able to see here. So gorgeous uh, male Northern Perula and it has a really distinctive song which we'll play here. Sounds exactly like what I saw today. Let's hear it again. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so you're looking at the maps. Let's let's enlarge the map here and see what we're looking at. So it looks like it's much less common on the west coast. Um it's it is uh whoop, what happened? There we go. So it's really, really heavy in the east and uh, much more sparingly distributed, sparsely distributed on the west coast. But it is here as as uh, today's eBird uh, checklist um, confirms. I didn't happen to get any photographs, but uh, I know some people have. Some people have even gotten some recordings of the local bird here at Almond and Quicksilver Park. So anyway backing up a little bit. So that's what happens when you type in a, a species here. Uh, we'll get to, uh, let's go to the map here. So this will actually give us uh, a slightly more detailed uh, picture of the bird. Uh, let's type in um, northern big me owl. So you see I did not type in the hyphen there for pygmy owl, which would go right there. <clears throat> Nor did I care whether it was uppercase or lowercase, but uh, eBird recognized it. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to reveal a map. <clears throat> All this gray stuff is kind of hard to look at. The gray, the dark gray areas are where we have tons of uh, eBird checklists. So we actually have data for everything that's covered in gray. And that's a lot. Up here, this area here is not covered in gray, uh, nor is a good portion of the ocean. But I find this kind of distracting. So I'm going to turn it off where it says I'm where it says not reported. I'm going to um, turn that off. So now we have a map which is pretty clean. And even though we know that it's not doesn't represent every square mile of the planet. We have a pretty good sense that uh, it, it's easier to look at. And down here where it says tip, zoom in to see individual hotspots. You're going to have to keep keep clicking that off if you want to get rid of it. So zooming in here <clears throat> to my hometown of uh, Mountain View, right here. Um, let's see. Taking a second to load. It's a bit slow. 
has a lot of data it's crunching. Well then, that's taking too long. But you can see here this area, this uh, triangle formed by 101 and 237 and 85. I live right in this triangle here. So very close to the bay. And um, you can see here that there are no northern pygmy owls reported on the valley floor. But quite a few uh, actual reports in the Diablo range. The red ones are 30 days reports that are 30 days old or uh, or newer blue reports are they're beyond 30 days old and if you look just compare the diablo range in this area here to what we're seeing in the santa cruz mountains how many more reports of pygmy owl there are in the santa cruz mountains that's just kind of interesting the santa cruz mountains of course are far wetter than the Diablo range, so perhaps it has got something to do with it, but <clears throat> in any case, they're uh, up here at Joseph uh, D. Grant County Park. This area here, this looks like maybe Smith Creek. So uh, let's just click on that. Yep, Smith Creek Fire Station. I was just there a couple of days ago, and Mike uh, had a uh, northern pygmy owl there on uh, the 22nd of May just well that's yesterday so anyway I don't see any icon here so I know he did not include a photograph and he didn't include a comment either because there would be an icon for that but uh, let's just take a look at the, his at his list oh see so has a recording of um, house wren and uh, no comments and no image or anything for the northern pygmy owl, but but I know I've seen it there before. So uh, yeah, and it's not uh, it's not unexpected there at all. So and uh, so that it sounds like a wonderful report. Looks like a great checklist. And remember from before we could click on this map and it would show us where it is, but we already know where it is. We wanted to click on the Smith Creek Fire Station right here on the checklist we could uh, see more data about the checklist. So we see the number of species that are reported there, 129 species recorded at the fire, Smith Creek Fire Station. There are 155 checklists. I'm sure I've got some of those. Um, and we could see that uh, last seen, the turkey vulture was last seen uh, today. And uh, so too was red-tailed hawk. So somebody was there. Mike was there today, and um, Garrett was there yesterday. And he so he got the California quail, which apparently was seen yesterday, but not today. So you can move down the list, and you could see all these reports. But kind of what's more interesting, and and you can see the people who have been there, and you can you can click on Mike's list or Garrett's list. Michael's list. You can click on those and you can see here how many species they saw on each of those days. You can see here that, that I was there uh, a few days ago and you can see here that uh, the top eBirders for that list that uh, Bill has the highest total of uh, species there. Um, I, uh, Mike and I uh, have uh, 63. <clears throat> well, that's kind of interesting to look at. Um, but here's what's really fun. You look at bar charts. You can click on bar charts <clears throat> and it will generate a really nice bar chart for that checklist area. <clears throat> what's kind of interesting is you see these gray patches here? It means there's no data for those months, which means that uh, where are we now? We're at the end of May. We're going to hit June in a few days, and there is no data for the first three weeks of June. That's interesting. It means that we could go there, anyone could go there, in the, in the beginning of June, 
the first three weeks of June and submit reports that would be brand new information for that checklist spot, that, that hot spot. I find that really kind of fun and exciting because it means that despite all the things we know about birds, all the birding that's done, all the experts that there are, there are still things that we just don't know. And one of the things we don't know is what birds are there the first three weeks of June or the, the uh, uh, last three weeks of July, etc. Or all of December. There's no data for December. So, sure, there have probably been uh, surveys there that were not put on eBird. But as far as eBird is concerned, there's no data there. So, I'd say find a checklist area that has some gray areas and then visit that spot during that time period and be the uh, be the first person to submit something new so we're going to backtrack here go back to the checklist area what else can we show here high counts printable checklists mm -hmm. we'll, we'll look at that later okay so here we are back on the, um, this page. <clears throat> We're going to go back to Explore. Um, actually, let's go back here for a second. I wanted to point out the fact that, do you see the blue, do you see the purple blocks that are there? You can actually ask it to show the points sooner, and it will populates uh, a fairly big area with the dots, blue and red, the markers, blue and red, um, before it would otherwise. It takes a lot of processing power to do this. So uh, they make it an opt-in. So you can click show points sooner and it will reveal spots a bit earlier. The other thing you can do is you can toggle between uh, the terrain, which is my personal favorite. You can look at street you can look at uh, satellite, which you don't particularly care for, although it is interesting to, to look at the Monterey Canyon here. <coughs> and you could do a hybrid, which I also don't really care for. I find it distracting to look at. I, I think my favorite, this is where I'll leave right in here. My favorite is the terrain because it uh, very quickly shows you green areas, hilly areas, watery areas, and um, I think it tells a lot and it takes a bit less processing power, I think. Explore page where we're looking for uh, species maps. Let's type in Northern Pygmy Owl again. And I forgot to point out, do you see Northern Pygmy Owl um, Glaucidium gnoma, and then we've got Noma noma, and Noma californicum, and Noma pinnacola, and Noma cobanensi, and Noma hoskinsii. So these are all subspecies down here. The one that first appears will be the superspecies, and since most of us are not particularly good about recording subspecies. It's always safest. You'll get the biggest picture of the northern pygmy owl if you just go to the first one without the subspecies uh, uh, trinomial. So let's do that one more time. And I wanted to point out that after you take off not reported and you close this little window down here and you zoom in, <clears throat> let's look at the Bay Area because I want to, let's, uh, well, we've got the show points sooner on there already. See, we've got to close this little thing here again. Let's type, let's click on the Explore Rich Media. And look what happens. Do you see the little P markers and the A markers? Those are photos and audio. So let's just type in here to... Let me see. No. Anyways, let's let's type. Let's click on. Um, no, let's go back to the Smith Creek area. Bruce has got a photo of the um, 
nor the pygmy owl on the mule trail. Uh, it looks like it's at uh, Grant Park. Let's click on that. that. was back in 2013. Let's see his picture. There it is. Look at that. Well, Mount Hamilton CBC. The Mule Trail. So uh, I know I've heard that name before, but I, I can't place where it is. I, I, I thought it was part of the Grant Park, but perhaps not. So you can click on that, of course. And Oops, there's an error. Well, oh well. But we can see his picture there, and that's pretty great. And similarly, if we had uh, clicked on an audio, we would have... Oh, there's Brooke. I know her. Let's click on her list here, and we can hear her recording. So you hear it down there, doot, doot, doot. That's the pygmy owl, and that's a great little recording. So you can submit um, photos and recordings and video, and I've even submitted some drawings. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. On the Explore page, that's this portion right there, and we looked at what happens when you type in a name of a bird here. It takes you to the uh, Cornell site with kind of uh, general information about the bird, beautiful photographs, recordings, and a, and a map. And we went to species maps where we can get a very detailed map of a bird in whatever area you want to focus on. And you have the ability to look at uh, audio and, and video, and, and we didn't show that, but there's a video uh, icon and, of course, photographs. So that was pretty interesting, and you can poke around and and uh, zoom in and zoom out of the map and change it from um, from terrain to uh, oh, um, aerial views and such. Now we're going to look at uh, search photos and sounds. This is um, going to look very different. So I just clicked on that to see what happens. And here we go. Takes a little second to load in and and there we have got uh, a beautiful selection of rather random birds and um, I recognize a lot of these birds I actually recognize this is Brian's um, Brian Sullivan's photograph of the ivory gull um, down in uh, San Luis Obispo a few years ago I saw that very same bird and that is one of the most spectacular photographs uh, I can imagine of that bird in any case and here's spoon-billed sandpiper uh, Alan's Hummingbird. Um, a lot of times I, I look at this list here and I, I recognize um, some of these photographers. Um, I definitely recognize Brian, um, but uh, well, it just it's so wonderful to look at these. But let's say we want to look at something specific. Let's look at um, well, another one of my favorites, uh, Northern Pygmy Owl. Oh, and remember, we're going to click the, the top one because it's going to give us the most uh, options. Um, the subspecies, people do uh, post birds uh, with the trinomial, and I encourage you to do that if you know the trinomial, if you know the subspecies. But if you don't, pop it into the regular general. And uh, But if you're doing a, pro a research project or something, having this ability to look at the subspecies uh, range maps distribution that's very helpful but here northern pygmy owl and uh, here we see immediately lots of uh, here's one in the snow so clearly that's not photographed in um, the bay area and uh, some of these birds look a little bit more reddish uh, some more brownish so i would imagine these are photographed from all over the area but let's take a uh, let's take a look and of course you could click on any of these and and um, it would take you to the checklist. It's this one here. Here, oh, spectacular. Down here at the bottom, you could look at the actual checklist that uh, David photographed um, at uh, Gazos Creek Road. I know exactly where that is. Let's just do that. For example, click on that checklist.
And here we go. Oh, and there's something else I forgot to point out. Now, you know, the blue text is always clickable. So you can click on the, the check the uh, uh, location details for Gazos Creek Road, and you could type on San Mateo County. You could type, you could click on California, et cetera, and you, you get more information. Um, but what I forgot to point out is that you can click on the name here of the contributor. So uh, this allows you to see their profile. And there's a picture of David. <clears throat> Looks like he has a Canada gull here. Sorry, <laughs> Canada J, uh, my, my mistake there. And since we know we've got Canada Jays in portions of California, uh, maybe he maybe that was shot in California. Looks like he's birded an awful lot in Texas and area around here. He hasn't uh, he hasn't e birded there. But this is pretty fun and interesting. You can see his photographs too, all the photographs that he's taken. So I love this. Um, you know, birding is a really social uh, pursuit, and it's nice to it's nice if you if you fill out your profile here with a picture of yourself uh, or your favorite location or whatever, and just allow people to uh, to uh, get to know you a little bit. Now they can't contact you, so it's it could be as private as you want, and you don't have to fill out the the profile, but but I prefer to do that, and I'll show you mine a bit later. But let's go back a little bit more um, to this picture, and we'll close that. So let's take a look here for location, and let's type in Santa Clara County. That's where I live. Santa Clara, California. See, I didn't even have to finish it. It filled it out. <clears throat> but you do have to click on that, and this will repopulate the page with um there we go repopulate the page with images from santa clara county so these are great now just like me this person bill he took um takes multiple pictures of the of the bird to show to different angles and things and that's that's pretty wonderful here's a recording chris johnson i know him um <laughs> this is a kind of a funny picture, uh, pretty much obscured by the by the pine needles. So once again, we see a variation in color. Some of these look very reddish. Some look uh, quite uh, grayish or brownish. This is these are excellent pictures, Dave. Yeah. Now, when, look at that. The two uh, false eyes on the back of the head. So you could um, <clears throat> let's say we uh, let's say we take the name of the bird out altogether. But no, let's do something else first. So I know that I have photographed Northern Pygmyel. So I'm going to type my name in here and see if anything comes up. <clears throat> no, no results found. Hmm. Maybe it's because it wasn't photographed in Santa Clara County. So I'm going, to, I'm going to click that one off. There we go. So those are my pictures of, of Northern Pygmy Owl, and they were photographed. This is uh, Stanislaus County here, I'm pretty sure. No, sorry, this is San Mateo County. This is Alameda County. Um, this is Stanislaus County, I think. No, this one down here is Stanislaus County. In any case, you could see, you could look for, um, and you could even, let's say, take the bird name out altogether and leave my name in there. We'll click that off. So these are all the photographs that I've uploaded. Um, so here's the uh, blue-winged teal here. Here's the parakeet auklets. This is the uh, Ross's gull drawing. I actually did get some photographs of that too. Prairie Falcon. This is a great blue heron eating a Sora. Black Vulture. Uh, Pygmy Owl. Western Screech Owl. There's a drawing of a worm eating warbler. The plane flycatcher, redneck stint. And, you know, there are quite a few pictures here. There's a, I think, this red footed booby here. Yellow crowned night heron. Uh, oh, there's the Gargany. Yeah. So. I love submitting pictures, but I'm really not a photographer, so my pictures aren't very good. Uh, well, here's uh, here's masked duck. That was a really good find in Texas. 
The point of all this is that uh, you can do a search here for a bird name or for a location or for a date range or a, a photographer that you want to uh, research. Uh, it, and it's a great way of looking for whatever you're trying to find. Um, and this is a great place to do it. So we're going to back out of here and uh, go back to explore. <clears throat> so that concludes this episode of Ask Bird Guy uh, on the explore feature of eBird. So next up, we'll be talking about the MyBird section of the website. And I wanted to point out before I forget that uh, there is a uh, eBird uh, Facebook community called eBird uh, Community Discussion Group. You can sign up for that and post your questions uh, and uh, ask technical, uh, learn about technical things regarding this site, how best to use it. So it's a good resource if you have more questions, but then you can also send me a question. Uh, at director at scvas.org, and I look forward to answering your questions about eBird or any other bird-related topic. So enjoy the next episode.